Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek. VR news for July 7th, 2016. So just quick uh, personal update. Um, still plugging ahead on the games that I've been uh, testing and recording. So I think that's, that's pretty cool. I can't wait to start releasing those videos. Uh, what I've basically done is kind of used the, the Room VR a lot for those videos. So I'm doing a lot of Room VR stuff on the webcam and gameplay kind of in the screen. And then kind of an overhead view that I'm experimenting with to kind of capture it almost from like a top down. I haven't seen that kind of view in it. Just to give you an idea of how the environment works if you don't have VR. I'm going to see how much it interferes with the play screen, uh, you know, like the main game screen. We'll see. Uh, in Oculus Rift news, my tracking number shows, just to give you guys an idea, I live about 20 kilometers, I guess, you know, 10 miles roughly. You use miles north of the U.S.-Canadian border. And I don't think it flew. <laughs> I could swear my Oculus Rift drove across the states. But anyways, it's in Washington State, and the last I, last update they had when I checked it last was uh, 11.30 in the morning, and it was closing in on the border. So unless there's an issue with customs, hopefully I'll see it tomorrow sometime. If it's got to go to UPS, a sorting facility here, instead of directly to a local depot, I don't know. It might be Monday or whatever, but it's a day or two away, and that's, that's good. So on to some news. There's an author from Polygon who had an opportunity to test Doom and Fallout 4. Now remember, there's already, there's a couple of different projects underway. There's the official Bethesda Fallout 4 VR, where they're not rebooting, but kind of redoing Fallout 4 with virtual reality in mind. Then there's kind of the fan hobbyist version of that, which is using Vire IO, which reminds me, I haven't even gone back to that. I still want to finish testing that. So just keep that in mind. There's two different ones. The one I'm talking about here is the official one. So this Polygon author tried them out and it was really interesting. She was somebody who had tried some VR, but the biggest complaint was movement and you know, he or she, I don't know if it was a she, I didn't check the name, explained the movement that any fellow VR owners know, and that's the teleportation system, right? Where you, you know, point your little circle, click the trigger, you appear on that circle, which if you're on the rift, you're more or less kind of standing there. That's my understanding. And with the Vive, the amount of room VR scale that you have transports with you onto that circle. Which I liked for games like Vanishing Realms. Uh, it's an RPG game. I found that a lot of the environments there, and I don't know if anybody who's, who's played it of you, I know a few of you have, would agree. But my room VR size was pretty much on par with the environment rooms and hallways. So I personally like that teleportation system. And then having the room VR within a given chamber or hallway uh, to test things and fool around with stuff. I thought it was super immersive, really good. It's also one of the one of the games that I want to look at and have done some recording for. Just need to do some editing along with uh, hover junkers, etc. So that movement system's kind of been there, right, for, from the beginning. And we've gotten used to it. But it's a good point the author brings up. How ideal is it for fast-moving first-person games, right? You know, you take a game like Doom and Fallout, it's, a, it's inherently a different pace. It's a way more frantic pace. Hell, take a game like Skyrim, and it's a lot more frantic than the type of experiences that we've played on VR so far. There's one exception, and that's the Solace Project, which is a really awesome-looking game, guys, if... If you're bored, you like first-person games, you kind of like solving puzzles. Somebody called it Fallout 4 in space. It didn't feel like that to me. It felt more like MacGyver in space. You're on a planet. 
Uh, you're part of the Solace Project. You have to find a new homeworld for Earth. So not terribly original, but really, really immersive. And the devs for that game only recently added the VR support. But I, I swear, go try it. It feels like it was built from the ground up with VR. That could be when I jumped into it, right? Maybe the earlier versions were really bad and they changed it based on feedback and, and time. But all I know is the version I tried, it was fantastic. And that game had a bit more of a frantic pace and it was probably the first game where I started to question the movement just a little bit, right? Now, they do have other ways to walk around. You can still walk, you don't have to teleport, but it's definitely, when we're talking pure immersion and we talk about things that throw us out of immersion, movement is such an important thing, right? That I can see it getting to a point where that is going to be an issue and certainly Doom, which has always been a very frantic game, is going to you know, bring that up time and time again, right? I'm sure we're gonna not hear the last of it. And I've seen, you know, the frictionless sock. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but the guy's running in the little kind of like mini octagon, right? He's got the thing on his waist in VR and he's doing the sock run like this, shuffle, and moving in that direction. That's great if you're sort of in shape, but some of our, uh, our larger friends, they'd be hard pressed to do that. It'd be great exercise, right? But I don't know, what is the solution? Is it that, that type of a device, like an omnidirectional treadmill, you know, with a canvas kind of on a, on a circle, or I don't know. Uh, any ideas? Uh, I'd love to hear some, because uh, it's something that I think we're gonna be encountering more as VR moves forward. In other news, NVIDIA released the uh, specs, no real benchmarks yet on the 1060. So uh, a lot of you have been you know, making comments about, you know, should, should I wait? And generally I said, unless you've got money burning, you know, a hole in your wallet, kind of wait, let the dust settle. Let's see, you know, what the RX 480 is going to offer. Is there going to be better VR support for things like Crossfire and SLI? How is that going to evolve, right? Hold on to your money for a little bit. Unless, look, you've got a low end card, it's hurting your VR experience, you want something better for sure, spend something out there. But then I would probably point you if you wanted, if you were looking at the 1080, I'd probably say strongly consider the 1070. Um, you know, I spent that extra money because I had to have it. It was literally an impulse burning, burning a hole in my wallet type buy. If I went back, would I still pick the 1080? I probably would just because doing the videos and things, it's nice to have that as a frame of reference to compare against the the machine back there but um, the 1060 however so it's coming in at 249 bucks which is about you know 50 bucks more than the RX 480 and they're targeting 980 performance and making claims that they can even beat 980 you look at the specs you can kind of see it on the memory side of things right but I'm not saying I'm skeptical I'm just saying I would love to see some benchmarks to substantiate that because if it's true, that would be a fantastic, just like the RX 480 has potential, be a fantastic card on the NVIDIA side of the equation to enter VR with, right? Like that would be the kind of card, if you were somebody who is, you know, maybe you got a 960 or, you know, a slower card, that would almost be a good price point to kind of just buy you some more time, right? If you were okay with say, okay, I'll use this card for a year and then next spring, I'm gonna go for something better. You could retire it then, hand it down to somebody in your family, friends, sell it, whatever, right? So those are all options, but um, it's a six gigabyte card. So if you look at that price point at the, for six gigs, really the RX 480, they're probably people to kind of be comparable Maybe they're going to go for the 8 gig version of the RX 480, which then, what are we talking about? We're talking about $11 difference. So actually a lot closer than uh, you may have expected, you know, uh, a month ago when the RX 480 was first announced. So another interesting article, Apple has apparently filed uh, another alternate reality slash VR style patent. And there's not much information on that, but... 
you know, we've been talking about all these other companies kind of coming up and China was given as an example, just how many VR devices China has, right? There's like 20 to 30 on the go. It kind of makes ours look paltry by comparison, but you know, if you get Apple jumping into the fray, uh, Samsung with this other unit, you know, you've got potential for a pretty good North American and European dust up too. So it'll be neat to see how that plays out and what direction Apple's going with that. I just found it interesting, the terminology they used. It's like, well, Apple's always about kind of ownership, right? Uh, control and ownership. So maybe the AR mention was just an extension of that, right? Alternate reality, that's something that they, how they're going to market VR as AR. So I thought that was interesting just on a couple of fronts. But again, like with everything, it's going to be a waiting game to see how that pans out. Now, the other item that I wanted to talk about. And I thought this one was really interesting too. It's an application. It's called Envelop VR. And it's another one of those desktop type applications like virtual desktop, big screen. But apparently you're not as limited in what you can do. You've got a lot of flexibility for manipulating stuff. So you can take virtual screens and literally put them beside you. Whereas with you know, like the virtual desktop, uh, for example, you're kind of always manipulating one monitor. So to be able to kind of manipulate the screens like that and work in all those directions and different axis, uh, that's got some potential. So I'm going to follow that one. I don't spend a lot of time in, in VR desktop. I actually, honestly, I don't spend any time in there. I've tested it out, but I'm still more comfortable just without the HMD looking and I keep the HMD more for gaming. Uh, likewise with movies, haven't done a lot of that. I know some of you guys have. Um, I will in the future, I'll probably try that more. But right now I've got so many games that I want to do content with that. It's just been more a time issue than anything else. Uh, and, you know, and obviously a bit of desire. It just hasn't been a compelling reason to do that, right? The last thing I want to talk about is the dev for Call of Duty. Because it... It brought up an, something that I've kind of witnessed the last few months. And it seems like developers are on extreme sides of the whole VR equation, right? Either they're almost all in or they're completely out. There doesn't seem to be a lot of middle ground. I suppose you could argue that with Bethesda, right? Um, you know, are they truly going to go VR? No, they're probably designing a you know, uh, or building a VR department and skill set internally so that they have VR resources. So you could probably argue, you know, now that I'm thinking that through a little bit differently, you could probably argue that's the middle of the road. I just find it interesting how they come to those extreme conclusions, though. I can understand the middle ground. I can understand moving a little bit towards that side, a little bit towards this side even. But those extreme positions to either be all in on something that's unproven, right? Conversely, completely out on something that's unproven because it could be successful. Um, you know, at least word it more as a wait and see than it's going to fail. Like, that, personally, that's kind of the, the angle that I would want to take if I was, you know, doing publicity for the direction that the company is going to go in. But there you have it. That's it for news for July 7th. Uh, if uh, you have any other uh, questions or you know, clarifications for, for what was talked about, leave it in the comments below. I got to get myself to my shepherd's pie, a little bit more beer, and some games, because I can't wait to get to the games. Last update, guys, the dead pixel. Just remembered. Emailed on Friday, right? This was to the escalation department. And never heard anything back, but I thought, you know what? It's Independence Day Monday fine. Never heard anything back Tuesday. I said, you know what? Maybe this person took a long, long weekend, right? Sent an email Wednesday, no reply. Sent another email today, still no reply. So yes, there's a possibility. I don't want to seem too, too impatient. A possibility that the person took a week vacation, right? Maybe four days to make it a whole week. So I'm going to wait till next week. If I don't get it next week, I'll probably escalate it some more. I'm just really wary of going down that tier one support path again. So I figured I've got this channel of communication. 
she's the one that sent me the dead pixel. Maybe she can rectify it, right? So I'll give you guys an update next week where, where I am with that. But um, yeah, that's the situation. No, no reply in, in a week. So we'll see. Hopefully just a vacation. Oh, and I Twittered Daniel O'Brien and had no response back. But again, he may be on vacation too, although he was pretty quick to reply last time. Uh, so there you have it. I'm definitely out of here now, guys. Back to the games. Cheers.